today I'm going to be showing you guys how to get this super oceany, grungy evening look, so keep watching. So my foundation is already done and if you guys are curious about my first impression opinion on that then definitely check out one of the previous videos. I'll have it linked in the cards in this video so you can click and check it out if you're wondering how I first felt about this foundation since that's kind of what I just filmed. But I'm going to go ahead and set my foundation now with powder and here I'm taking Cabo um, Media Translucent Powder which is a Japanese brand. This one does lighten the skin a little bit because it has a high SPF in it. It's like a daily setting powder for SPF coverage. I would not recommend it if you're going to be going to a situation that has photography or like a night event or anything like that just because it's going to have a huge flashback on you. But I'm just going to go ahead and pick that up with this Eco Tools powder brush and I'm just going to kind of bake under my eyes with that. Just pressing it on. I'm just going to bake like everywhere that I tend to get oily. Like you just like if you're having any problems with like skin texture or if your foundation is just not really cutting it, this just makes your skin look baby smooth. That's one thing I always notice Japan does really good for is face powders. They slay it with face powders and mascaras and eyeliners. Just going to kind of smudge the excess on the lower under eye area. I don't like putting too much powder right on my under eye because I have permanent like fine lines and wrinkles there just because of my eye shape. So if I set it too heavily, it looks very cakey. And please note for this tutorial, my eyebrows are already done. It's just like my regular go-to brow routine that I do in every video. So nothing really different there. Now this look that I did in my previous, I think it was my May favorites video. It's actually really, really easy. Like I feel like I always try to stick with really easy looks. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just like that. I feel like they suit me a lot better. But this one, I, I went for more of that completely shimmery look. Like every single eyeshadow I used was shimmer based or had a flux to it or something. So nothing was matte that I used. So for the darker shades, for the halo eye look that I'm going to be doing today, I used this Excel quad that I got in Japan. Excel is one of my favorite Japanese drugstore brands just because for the price that you pay, it's pretty good and the pigmentation is decent, even though I feel like a majority of Japanese eyeshadows aren't that pigmented, like they're not the best. So this one is in the color code SR01 and it ran me about $16 in like yen. So I used the darkest shade here all on the outer portions of my eye and picking it up with this dual sided Eco Tools brush. I'm just gonna grab that dark brown shimmery shade and I'm just going to press it right onto the outer corners. Then doing the same and dragging it down onto the lower lash line. And then inner corner. And then I just like to connect a really thin line right in the middle, but still keeping that, that middle area of my eye fairly clear, but lightly just buffing out the edges ever so lightly. And I also like to kind of do the same line along the, the lash line. And then exact same thing to the lower lash line. Making sure you connect it to that top part right there. And don't worry about any harsh lines or things like that because we are going to blend it out afterwards. What is that? It sounds like thunder or is it just some crazy motorcycle guy like revving his engine like crazy? Uh, city life. No idea. City life plus Melbourne weather. So for the center color is what we're going to do now and I'm going to be using these Sigma Loose Shimmers and the one I'm taking today is in Pageant Tree. I don't ever really use this one but it's kind of this teal blue shade and unfortunately I'm not too sure if they still continue to sell these pigments but if you can find anything of a similar shade it will do as well. And it's just this, oh my god I'm trying to try not to spill it but show you. But it's just this really pretty a muted uh, teal, like dark teal shade. And I'm just going to use that on the center part of the halo eye. So I'm just going to be picking it up with this really densely packed short shadow brush. And then I'm just going to press it right into the middle. And just kind of slowly blend it around. 
Now this look really isn't like a super clean look. As you can see, it's just this really kind of, sorry, really like messy halo eye, but it's kind of the look I wanted to go for, like kind of this grungy, like sea look. Like good for like a summer night out, I feel like, if you want that kind of grungy style of halo eye. And then just going in and re-pulling that brown shade in towards it so it's not too blotched together, like it just kind of like fades into each other. Okay, so next I'm just gonna go in and blend, and like I said before, I, this look is a really messy, kind of grungy, glittery look. I don't know, really. I'm just gonna take the kind of medium warm brown glitter shade. I'm picking that up with the blending side of the Eco Tools brush. I'm just gonna very lightly buff out the brown shade. Now I have like kind of hooded eyes and a really small lid space to work with. So I usually have to pull up my transition shades and blending shades right into my brow then add a little bit of highlight after just so that I can actually see the colors that I want to see. And then I really like pulling my transition shades up into my eyebrow, like right at the front just a little bit because it gives me a different kind of shape to my eye socket. Then going in and taking this really small pencil brush, I'm taking that same shimmery gold warm color. I'm just gonna lightly blend it and connect it to that outer corner and right under everything. So I'm just gonna go in and highlight now and I'm gonna be using my go-to Bobbi Brown face highlighter in Pink Glow, but I also have been loving to use this for my eyes as well. And taking the same color and putting a little bit right on that inner corner area. Now I'm actually darkening this look a little bit more than what I had in the May Favorites video, just because I kind of, like what I, the makeup that I did in that video was just, I threw it on real quick. I didn't even care about how it looked. So this is kind of more of like the put together version of the grungy kind of ocean look. I have no idea what to call it, you guys. But I'm taking the Sigma's Escape Eyeliner, which is a matte black eyeliner. And I'm just gonna tight line my waterline. I have to get close to do this, I'm sorry. Cause I really want it to be super grungy. And personally for me, I really love putting a dot right on that inner tear duct as well. I feel like it kind of just ties everything together. Then because I'm keeping it really on the grungy side, instead of doing a liquid eyeliner, which is more neat and put together, I'm just gonna be taking that same Sigma eyeliner and drawing on a rough shape for a winged eyeliner, then blending it out to kind of keep like a smoky effect going on, but also like deepen the, the look a little bit. But I want to keep it really close to my lash line because I don't want the wing to overpower the look, which is why I don't often do um, eyeliner, just because, like I said before, I have a really limited eyelid space, so eyeliner usually kind of takes away from the, the eyeshadows, on me at least. So just kind of creating a straight style wing, which is the style I prefer for my eye shape just kind of following really closely to that lash line. And no need to really be perfect at doing this part because we are just gonna blend it out and really smoke it out. So now that we have our rough shape, I'm just gonna go in with an angled brush and kind of work at it a little bit. And I need to get closer to do this because my mirror is a bit far away. Just kind of like flicking it ever so lightly to pull it up. All right, so the winged eyeliner is all done, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and curl up my lashes to prepare them for my mascara. It's funny, I used to hate curling my lashes, then somewhere like when I, after I moved to Japan, I started doing it more often like on a regular basis. Like I used to just do it for video, and then I started doing it like whenever I would go out. For my mascara today, I'm gonna be using a Japanese one that I don't often use. It's the Flo Fleur Mote Mascara Long. I only really use these, this one if I'm wearing false lashes just because it's really good at um, lengthening and defining, but for daily use, if I'm not wearing falsies, I love more volume and thickness. Um, so this one just helps to really like blend, I feel like. It's a really good mascara, but just daily wear, it doesn't give me the look that I want. And then also apply a generous amount to the bottom lashes just to kind of keep up with that like heavy, grungy look. 
For my falsies, today we go with this look. I'm taking the Glam by Manicare Intense Lashes in number 34 Alessandra. These ones are like, they're like triple layered lashes and they're really fluffy looking. They're just so pretty. They really suit the kind of like grungy heavy look that the eyes have today. Do you guys hate when like your lash glue somehow hits your eye, ruins your makeup? <laughs> Always happens to me every time. But anyway, we're just gonna disregard that and move on. All right, so the eyes are officially done, looking super grungy over here. I'm really digging it, but I need to go in and dust off the fallout that's on my cheeks that I have right now. So just taking my brush from before, I'm just gonna like dust away right under my eyes. And because I had that baking powder on before, just sitting there, it's making it a lot easier to just like wipe away everything. And now that all of that is done, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my face makeup because I haven't done that yet. So I'm gonna be going into my next contouring kit and I'm gonna be taking this shade right here just because it has a little more of a yellowy undertone. Picking that up with an angled contouring brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and connecting from my inner part of my ear to the lip is kind of where you wanna draw your contour. And I like to pinch mine because this is a terrible contour brush. I don't recommend it. It's so old too, it probably doesn't even exist anymore. Just kind of like drawing that line there. And you always want to make sure you put it into your like sideburns too, because yeah. And then I like to flick it up after to blend upwards. And then along the hairline as well. Down and along the jawline. And a little onto the neck too, just so everything kind of blends a little bit more seamlessly. And I just kind of keep working at it until it's to my liking. I don't always like a harsh contour. Like right now for me, this is like super harsh. Probably for some other people too. So I just kind of keep working at it. And then to just soften it a little bit more, just going in with that same brush and just kind of like re going over it to kind of just soften it. I mean, you can totally keep it as heavy as you like it, but personally for me, I'm not really huge on cheekbone contour. Like I like a little bit just for added color and definition, but not, not too heavy. Now I'm a big fan of using blushes. So now I'm going to be taking this somewhat warmer toned peach blush and it's Sigma's Heavenly Blusher. I've been using this for years. You guys, if any of you guys continue to watch my channel, you might be familiar with it. It's been a while since I've had this one. And I'm just going to apply that right on the top portion of my contour. Just lightly, lightly feathering it on, like touching really gently. And then I like to personally pull it up onto the cheekbone and around there. Because I don't really like having it too much on the actual apples of my cheek. I just feel like it doesn't really suit my face shape. For my usual nose contour, I'm going to be going into this Espoir eyebrow kit and taking the lightest shade in on my Sigma 3D HD Precision brush. I'm going to be using that to contour my nose. I love using eyebrow palettes just because, I don't know, I feel like when I use actual like contour kits on my nose, it looks like you can tell. It's much more obvious. Well, for some reason, eyebrow shades look more natural. So just following up my natural lines. And I don't really like to change the appearance of my nose much. I just like to enhance the natural shape that my nose has, like the bridge. It's just following up the sides. And then I also, for some reason, like within this past year, liked doing this. I just kind of cut, cut it off <laughs> right there at the tip. I feel like it gives more of a button appearance just to shade that, that little area. And then this is something new that I've been doing within the past couple months or three months I've just been like making kind of a shadow there and it kind of gives a frontward appearance of more of like a flicked up nose if you just kind of kind of go in and, and draw a line right above the ball of your nose so I don't know if you can already tell but it just gives it it gives the frontward appearance that I have more of a flicked up like Peter Pan style nose and then I don't like it looking too obvious with that little flicked area so I just usually go over and buff over it a little bit with my brush so it's not too intense just my powder brush so I don't add any more product on it I just lightly go over and buff it out for the highlighter for my face today it's gonna be the Bobbi Brown one again because I am absolutely in love with it 
and I'm just taking my favorite highlighting brush, which is my Sigma Exact Blend E32, and I like to pop a little bit of color right under that, that little line I drew. So it's not exactly the tip of my nose, but it just kind of adds to the, the appearance that I have a flick and it just catches the light really nicely. So I just put it right there. And then I also like to apply just a small amount right on the bridge in between my eyes because it also gives the illusion that I have a little more height right there, but I don't connect it. If you connect your highlighter all the way down your nose, you're gonna give your nose a longer appearance. So this kind of gives a trick of, to the eye that you have a shorter nose. <laughs> It's not too transforming, it's just like these small little enhancements. Then picking up that highlighter, I'm just gonna add it to my cheekbones as well. Cause it's my all time favorite. Like, look at that. Oh my God. It's honestly, you guys, the most beautiful highlighter I have ever used in my life. It's just, it looks so wet and dewy and Wonderful. And those are all the places that I like to highlight. Now for my lips today, I'm going to use the same color I used in that previous video and I'm pretty sure it was ColourPop's Ultra Satin Lip in Echo Park. These are the two colors I have today that I'm contemplating between. I have Chi, ColourPop's Ultra Matte in Chi, and then I also have the Echo Park one. I'm not too sure. They're both very, very similar shades, but I feel like Echo Park has just a little more of a pink tone to it while Chi is more just like a, a nude shade, like it's more brown and warm. I guess I'll do Echo Park because it is similar to the one that I did last time. I feel like Chi might just be a little too on the warm side for this look just because I do have a little bit of those cool tones in the eyes from the blue and teal shades. So going in with Echo Park in the satin formula. Is it? Okay. No, oh my God, it's magic wand. It's not, oh no, I'm sorry guys. Same, same though. They're all so very similar that it's not really that huge of a difference. If my neighbors decided they're gonna start playing the guitar, like learning to play the guitar, so annoying. I hope you guys enjoyed this makeup tutorial. It's kind of like the grungier, more intense version of the look that I did in my May Favorites video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to thumbs up this video if you did. Comment down below if you have any of the same products or if you have any recommendations or requests. And of course, remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos like these as I upload very often on my main channel. It's like two videos a week and then on my vlog channel, it's every other day. So I'm uploading pretty frequently, you guys. So definitely stay tuned for more videos. Anyway, you guys, I love you so much. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.